Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, we've got the belt, the eyes, and the little antenna thing to go here for the UV mapping. Now, some of this stuff I may not use a texture on, so it may not actually need a UV map. But I don't know exactly if that's the case yet. So I tend to, for a project like this, go ahead and UV map just everything. Um, it really doesn't take that long. So um, I'll just spend an hour or two and just UV map the whole character. And then as I texture or add materials, I've got the option. I can use the texture paint tools to maybe paint a bump map, or I can add an image texture, or I can play around. So if you're wondering, do I really need to UV map this whole thing if I plan on putting materials on it? No, you don't. But I like to keep my options open, and I'm just nerdy enough that I kind of like UV mapping. So, as I said, I'll spend an hour or two UV mapping everything, and then I've got options um, as I deal with materials and textures. Now, if this were a video game character, you would have to UV map everything and apply image textures that you'd then take into the game engine. But since this is going to be an animated character, I've got options. And that's what I like. All right, well, let's take a look at UV mapping the belt down here. So I'm going to select one of these pieces and zoom in with the period key. Uh, let's go ahead and begin with this piece. Um, I don't think it has any depth to it. I think it's single-sided. Let's shift H to isolate it. And sure enough, yeah, it's just a single-sided piece. So I'll just tab into edit mode. Select everything, hit U, and unwrap. Now, notice what it says up here. Object has non-uniform scale. And that can be an issue. Let's go into the UV editing screen layout and take a look at this. I'll zoom in here. This doesn't look too bad the way it is here. And even if we hit conformal, that changes it a bit. If we hit angle-based again, that makes it a little more uniform. But let's go ahead and apply our transformations and see if there's any difference in the way this UV maps. So I'm going to tab back into object mode. And if I hit the N key, you can see here that there are transformations in the rotation and in the scale. If we hit Control A, we can apply the transformations for the location, rotation, scale, or both the rotation and the scale. So I'll click that. And now the rotation is all zeros and the scale is all ones. Okay, so if I hit the N key to close that and tab back into edit mode, now if I hit U and unwrap, notice I do not get an error up here. And what it does when it unwraps, it matches the shape of the object a little better. So if you're having trouble getting the UVs to actually match the shape of the object, it could be that you need to apply the transformations of the object. All right, let's go back and I'll press Alt-H and let's select this piece here, this belt, and I'll press Shift-H to isolate it. Now I think we're gonna to need to break this up and probably the best place to do it would be maybe right up front underneath that belt buckle. So let's mark a seam here. So there's our seam. Now, let's take a look, I'll tab back into object mode, and let's take a look at our rotation and scale here. There are values other than zeros and ones there, so let's hit Control A and apply that. Now, if we come back into edit mode and hit A to select everything, and then U and unwrap, we get something like this. Let's take a look at conformal. Not much better, right? Now, there's a couple of things we could do to make this a little bit more uniform and lay it out a little better. Let's um, give this a material. Let's give this this UV test material with the checker pattern on it. And you can see how it kind of bends and stretches a little. It's really not that bad. But if you were going to lay something down on this that needed to follow the path of the belt, having the UV map tilted like this might be a little bit difficult. So one way to deal with this actually, let me hit control up arrow to maximize the UV image editor. One way to deal with this is just to go through and select each edge and make it flat. Um, you can press alt and click 
to select an edge here in the UV editor. And then right down here under UVs, you've got Weld Align. The W key is the shortcut. And you can align along the X and the Y. So if I clicked Align Y here, it would zero all those out along the Y axis. So we can do that again. I can Alt select this edge, hit W and align Y. Alt click, W, align Y, and on through. And we can do the same thing for these. We can Alt click one of these, press W and align X, and just go through and do this. Now granted, if you had a large UV island with a whole lot of edges, this may not be real efficient, but for this, this isn't bad. All right, so there we go. Now I'll press control up arrow and let's go take a look at it. And you can see now that the UVs are really very much in alignment with the path of the belt. So that's just another tool that you can use while you're UV mapping to align your UVs. All right, let's bring everything back with Alt-H. And now let's uh, work on these packs. Now I didn't apply the material to this to the belt buckle. We could do that here. I'll just add that. All right, now let's work on these packs here. It looks like I still have the mirror modifier on here. No, I've applied it actually. And so these are all one object. Okay, let's take a look at that. I'll press Shift H. I think to make my life a little easier, I'm going to go ahead and delete half of these. So I'll just take the border select tool in wireframe and select all of those and hit X and faces. And now for these, I think what I could do is let's turn off the subdivision surface modifier for a minute so we can see them a little better. And maybe I'll just take the edge of each one of these, that corner edge, and mark a seam there. So I'll take this one, this one here, this, this, and this, mark a seam like that. Then I'll select all of this with the L key. I'll hit U and unwrap and see what we think. I don't feel like that split it out very well. And I see why. It's because we have these extra edges behind here. Now I could delete these or I could select these edges. So maybe I'll just delete them. I'll hit the C key and come in here and just delete these faces here. I don't think I need these. So now I'll select this with the L key, hit U and unwrap, and there we go. We've got our packet unwrapped. Now let's add the UV test and see how it looks. It's a little warped here, isn't it? Now we can, of course, hit U and unwrap and change from angle base to conformal. We can try that. And that looks quite a bit better, actually. I can hit the R key and rotate that. Now we can also go back to object mode and make sure that our rotation and scale are zeros and ones, and they are, so that helps. Well, that doesn't look too bad, actually. I think I'd probably go with that. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do this same thing for all the rest. All right, we've got the packs done. I'll hit Alt-H to bring everything back. And lastly, well, almost lastly, let's deal with the eyes here. If we select these eye outer, and I'll just hit H to hide them. Let's grab one of these and take a look at it. I'll turn the mirror modifier off for right now and I'll hit shift H to isolate it and let's take a look at this I think what we're going to need to do is split it out back here so we could say go to vertex mode and maybe select oh let's begin here let's try this I'll select this and then control click that and then maybe 
shift select this vertex and then control click that and we'll just kind of go around here pressing shift and then control and selecting all of these edges here so I'm just doing every other one and then control click here so now we've got these edges selected I'll go ahead and mark a seam here so we have seams going back like this all right so now I'll just select everything and press U and unwrap and let's see how it works that's not bad let's try angle based not bad either um, let's go ahead and add the material and see how it looks so now what I want to do is join all the objects together and arrange the UV map so I'm gonna to need to apply a few mirror modifiers here uh, let's see what I've got I've got uh, a mirror modifier on the hands I'm gonna bring it up to the top of the stack and apply it here um, looks like I've got the same for the boots I'll bring it up to the top of the stack and apply it uh, what else do I have here I need to add a mirror modifier for those belt packs so I'll do that and then apply those I'll just bring them up to the top and apply them there um, anything else do I have anything else that needs to be applied here how about the legs no I think I've got it all here all right let's try this now I'm going to want to select everything except the eyes so I've got the outer eyes hidden away I'll take the inner eyes and turn off the selectability here in the outliner and then I'll just hit the A key to select everything and then I'll press Control J and that will combine everything into one object and here it is so I'll call this Captain Quark and there he is now I can come back over here to the UV editing screen layout I can tab into edit mode and hit the A key to select everything and look at that mess that is something to behold I'm gonna hit control up arrow to make that full screen now what I'd like to do is apply the average island scale tool and then pack the islands all into this zero to one space so to do that with everything selected I'll press control A and then I'll press control P and there it is it's all there for us alright I'm gonna hit control up arrow and there he is so I'll come over here back to the the default and there is our Captain Quark character UV mapped and ready to go to begin applying our materials and our textures so in the next series of videos we will begin doing that we'll apply the materials and then we'll think about how many image textures we actually need so thanks for watching and I'll see you soon take care blender fans assemble it's time to create Captain America's motorcycle using hard surface modeling techniques in blender in this online course you'll learn the tools and processes of modeling a complex realistic vehicle We'll use reference images taken of the motorcycle from the first Captain America movie on display at the Harley Davidson Museum. We'll build the bike up from the frame, assembling each piece using different blender tools along the way. And we'll even go over setting up materials and lighting for a final render. This course is available at blender101.com, where you'll also get my Blender Scene Creation course the course that takes you through the entire process of creating an animated scene in Blender from the first polygon to the final rendered movie. And if you're just starting out with Blender, you'll also get the course Blender 101 Introduction to 3D Modeling, an in-depth course that covers the fundamentals of modeling in Blender. And at Blender101.com, you get new courses and projects every month. So join me as we create Captain America's motorcycle at Blender101.com. It's Blender for everyone.